There are allegations tonight suggesting James Ashby, who's accused the Speaker Peter Slipper of sexual harassment, has had sexual relations with underage boys. Queensland police are investigating the claims, which were revealed just 24 hours after former Howard Government Minister Mal Bruff was pre-selected to run against Peter Slipper in his Queensland seat of Fisher. Political correspondent Tom Igledon has more from Canberra. The federal court battle over whether Peter Slipper sexually abused his then employee James Ashby was already politically charged. Tonight's revelations raised the stakes still higher, with James Ashby's sexual behaviour now under the microscope. A man's alleging that in 2003, when he was 15, he had a relationship with Mr Ashby, then in his mid-twenties. The revelation came in a letter the man wrote to Mr Slipper earlier this year after Mr Ashby filed his federal court complaint. It claims Mr Ashby broke the relationship off after a few weeks. The guy James broke it off for was also 15 at the time they began their relationship, the letter says. In an alleged Facebook conversation with the man this year, Mr Ashby gave another reason. Your mum freaked me out when she walked in on you and me in bed. That did my head in for some strange reason. The alleged Facebook contact was an apparent attempt to ease Mr Ashby's guilt at breaking the relationship off. I have no idea why your acceptance of this half ass explanation is needed, but maybe it'll give me some closure for something that's been a long-running issue for me. Sex with the 15-year-old is punishable by up to 14 years jail in Queensland. Mr Slipper passed the allegations on to Queensland Police in June, noting that though the alleged events took place before Mr Ashby worked for him, they raise issues of possible criminal conduct. In these circumstances, I cannot ignore the allegations. Queensland police are yet to determine whether charges will be brought in the matter, though investigations are continuing. Mr Ashby's not commenting about the claims. Mr Slipper has clear motivations for bringing such allegations to the police. His bitter battle with Mr Ashby's cost him the Speaker's chair and significant damage to his reputation. How much his counterclaims hurt Mr Ashby's reputation can only be guessed at. What's certain is they'll do nothing to raise the tone of political discourse here in Canberra. The revelations on the 7.30 program tonight come just 24 hours after the Liberal National Party anointed former Howard Minister Mal Bruff to run against Mr Slipper in his Queensland seat of Fisher at the next election. Mr Slipper's claiming Mr Bruff's part of a political conspiracy against him based on four meetings Mr Bruff had with Mr Ashby before Mr Ashby filed his federal court claims. And why wouldn't you? meet with someone who had been a party member just because they were a staffer of Peter Slippers. But somehow that turns into a conspiracy in the eyes of the media led by, as I said, the muckrakers of the Labor Party. Let's get beyond this. Let's let the courts deal with it. The opposition leader was facing questions about Mr Bruff's contact with Mr Ashby even before tonight's revelations. Will Mr Bruff's dealings with James Ashby hurt his chances in the seat of Fisher? I think we've got an excellent candidate in the seat of Fisher, and uh, Mal has been entirely upfront about that. And Mr Abbott noted politics has been played tough already this year in Queensland. The ruthlessness and the viciousness that we saw directed against Campbell Newman uh, was just uh, a warm-up uh, for what we're going to see in the federal election. When contacted tonight, Mr Bruff denied knowledge of the claims being made against Mr Ashby. Tom Eagleton, Late Line.